Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you for tuning in to another powerful prophetic vision TV telecast. Amen. I'm your prophet, Derrick D. Gillespie. I have my friend, my partner in the gospel, <laughs> my God, anointed man of God, apostle, prophet, doctor, Marcellus Richardson. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Glory to God. Welcome to Monday Night Raw Rhema. Amen. Amen. R Monday Night Raw Rhema. Amen. Monday night is set aside for a different group of people. Amen. If you need some meat, amen, you need to be tuning in on Monday night. We have meat on Sunday night, but we got mm -hmm. a full course meal, my God, on Monday night raw rain. Amen. With, it, this is where we release the revelation that, you know, sometimes God gives you something that you just can't release at all times. Amen. Well, God has released us to release his word and his revelation. Amen. For apostolic foundation. Amen. For a prophetic nation. Amen. For a people of God. Amen. That's going to take God at his word and have enough faith to Step out on it, even if he's by himself. Amen. Monday night, raw Raymer. Amen. Tonight and on Monday night, raw Raymer, we're going to be dealing with basically, I guess you could say, gifts and callings or maybe purpose. It's going to be all in the family with the fivefold ministry and just however the Holy Ghost leads us. But that's basically the areas that we're going to be tapping in. This is part one. Amen. Of this particular message. Amen. So if you would, just get your pencils, get your, get your pad, get your Bible, amen. This ministry is based off every word in the Bible, amen. We, hey, I'm telling you right now, if we say something that, that's not Bible-based, don't you receive it, amen. You ain't got to tune in no more. But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, we are, this ministry is based on the Bible, amen. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, amen. He's not only a prophet, but he's the Son, 100% God and 100% man. It's very important that I stress this point because there are so many different de denominations and they accept God but they don't want Jesus they think Jesus was a man because he came as our example so let us get that clarified amen God gave us some, some a revelatory word amen uh dealing with the prophetic the prophets has been really uh uh uh, per persecuted in the church nowadays, amen. Uh, there's not a prophet in every congregation, amen. And if it is, he's not being recognized as the prophet, amen. But the prophetic voice is very important in the body of Christ, amen. The prophetic utterance, amen. The, pro the prophet can see when a lot of other folks can't see in the church, amen. But a lot of time the prophet has been persecuted, amen. And the enemy knows how strong the prophet's position and office is in the church because the, the trinity of God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but the trinity of the enemy is what? Satan, the false prophet, and the antichrist, amen. He even have, we even have psychics that's got the gift, amen, but they're not representing God, amen. A psychic is somebody with the prophetic gift, but they're not operating out of the unction of the Holy Ghost, amen. They're operating out of the, for their own gain, amen. And so we've got to clarify and amplify, amen, the prophetic. So God gave us a word, amen. Dr. Richardson, God gave us this word, uh, and prophetic. The amplophetic, brother. Amplophetic. He gave us Amen. the word amplophetic. Well, you, well, we amplify and clarify the prophetic. Amen. Uh, elaborate on that amplophetic a little bit. Amen. Well, the amplophetic is a, is a word that God uh, dropped in my spirit. Yeah. Amen. About two years ago. My God. And what the Lord told me is that because we live in a time where it seems like the terminology has been raped. Mm. In other words, there are so many that are claiming to be prophets come on now and there are there are so many that are claiming to be apostles and yes. and so many have uh, stepped out and t retitled themselves yes. but the problem is that many of them do not fully represent god's full idea amen when he called one to be a prophet or one to be an apostle right amen so what god wants to do he wants to up the ante Instead of taking it back, God is adding more to it. My God. Amen. So what he's doing, he's lifting up a standard and he's separating, mm -hmm. amen, those who are operating in his true flow, right. those that are operating in the true call, amen, of, of, of being an, a prophet or an right. apostle right. or operating in, in prophetic ministry, apostolic ministry. Glory what he God. does, is, what he's doing, he's clarifying, mm -hmm. amen, and he, he he's giving a, a, a new wind and new revelation, amen, right. to those that are truly called. Amen. Because as we know, uh, it, many are called, but, but few, are, few chosen. are chosen. Amen. <laughs> so we want to minister to the chosen and we want to, amen, help to strengthen them and help to uh, 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 
help provide a solid revelation foundation, amen, to those who have truly been called of God, amen, yeah, yeah. and even for those that have been called who are not yet, uh, who have been not been properly prepared, or right, those who are right. even striving, don't right. know which way to go, on, we want to get some revelation, some understanding, some knowledge, some direction, My amen, God. so they can make their calling and election sure, right. amen. Glory to God. So basically what we're going to be doing, because, see, I'm going to tell you, and this is not, we don't bash pastors. We don't bash men and women of God, even men and women of God that, that's made mistakes. We don't bash them because none of us co uh, came to God already perfect. Amen. But what we want to do is we want to shine the light in some areas that will help bring up your anointing, amen, and relieve and remove some of the stress and burden, amen. And so I want to focus, I want to deal with this term. We're going we're gonna to deal with the fivefold ministry, amen, but we got to understand that there are a lot of men of God that, and, you know, titles, titles do have, you know, I think labels, they are important, but they are not important. Amen. But in God, he, 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 he put some specific titles in position. Amen. Because they carry a certain anointing. They carry a certain gift. They carry a certain power and a certain grace. Amen. And so a way to look at the fivefold ministry is I can look at my hand right here. Right. And I can say that my hand is symbolic to fivefold ministry. Amen. Well, okay. The fivefold ministry is apostles, 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 prophets, Evangelists, pastors, and teachers, amen? So that's five, amen, representing the five-fold ministry, amen? But if I'm just acknowledging and walking in just a pastoral anointing, I'm handicapped. Why? Because there are four other offices, amen, that I could be operating in, amen? You can't be a pastor and not a teacher. You got to be able to teach the gospel, explain the gospel. Okay, if you're a preacher or a pastor, amen, you, you're proclaiming the gospel, amen. But then if you're also a pastor, you should be an evangelist, one that go out and, and win souls, amen. There also should be someone with the prophetic in there, amen. And so we tonight we want to amplify and clarify because the prophetic utterance or the prophetic anointing moves through all of the five-fold ministry. Even the pastor have an anointing, a prophetic anointing on his life, amen. And so we're going to look at very familiar uh, passages of Scripture, uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 11th verse. It grieved my spirit. I heard a man of God on TV preaching uh, uh, this same text, and he was preaching on uh, stay in your lane, okay? So I said, and he was a kind of traditional p pastor. So I said, well, let me see where he's going to go with this. And so what, he's, what he went with this is, he said, well, first of all, if somebody say they're an apostle, you need to ask them how old they are because the only apostles were the 12 that, walk, that, that, that moved around with Jesus. So he's saying that today there are no apostles. Well, I'm not challenging your, your theology, amen? But I am going to stick with the word of God, amen? And I just don't believe that God made 12 disciples and after that he broke the mold on, this, on, on, on apostles, amen? So tonight we want to bring clarif clarification to that particular theory, amen? Also, the prophets, like I said, the prophets has been bashed because some people have used the gift. First of all, the, the Bible says that gifts comes without repentance. So that means you're born with the gift, amen? God gave it to you. It's his gift, but he allowed you to have free will with it, amen? But just because the gift is working through you doesn't mean that you're holy, amen? So the gifts come without repentance, amen? But God wants you to use his, use his gift and where he gets the glory, amen? So we want to look at Ephesians 4 and 11. It says, and he gave some apostles, amen? Some past, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teaching, uh, some teachers for number 12. It said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. So guess what? Everybody can't do everything. Amen. But some of us was ordained to do certain things, amen? And so I'm going to stick with what the man of God was saying. Stay in your lane, but also know what your lane is. Come on, Dr. Rich. Amen, and that, and that, that, that right there, brother, is, is a very primary thing when it comes to walking in any gift or any role, right. amen? It's, in order to stay in your lane, you got to know your lane. Come on now. And there are many that are that are walking around today who really don't know what they're supposed to be doing. Right. Uh, some of them, to one degree or another, have realized that God has called them to something. Some. You know. You, you know. I'm gonna tell you some preacher. Listen, if if you're new in ministry or even if you've been in ministry a while and you know God called you to preach, it's not enough just to know He called you to preach. Come on now. 
because uh, being called to preach, is, that's too broad of a description. It really doesn't tell, tell you anything, but God called you to open your mouth. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know, he Amen. might he called you to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. But in that, what what exactly did he call you to do? Mm. Amen. You see, you fit somewhere in that fivefold ministry bracket. Right. Amen. Either God has called you as amen, possibly, amen. He's given you a teacher's anointing. Amen. Or perhaps he's called you, amen, as as a pastor. Amen. Perhaps he called you to be an evangelist. Right. Or even a amen, an apostle or a prophet. Amen. So you just can't stop with God called me to preach. You're going to have to seek out God, get more understanding, and get some more revelation. The only way you're going to do that is, Adam, I don't care who prophesies to you, who tells you what, you still going to have to get it through prayer. Right. Come on now. You're going to have to seek the face of God. You're going to spend some time. You're going to have to consecrate your yourself and tell mm -hmm. God to fully speak to you and show you for sure what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. 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 Because, listen, don't get your information third hand. Hallelujah. There are Amen. a lot. Of, don't get your information third hand. Even, at, even somebody prophesying to you is not a sure thing, on, amen, that you've heard from God. Mm -hmm. You got to go to God for yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to seek God for yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to spend some time in prayer. Yeah. Amen. You need to, amen. Don't let something so serious, don't take it so lightly. Come on now. Amen. 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 You're going to have to seek the face of God. Amen. And I was reading over, amen. I'm going to read the scripture from Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 2. Mm. And it reads, listen to this. It says, thus said the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Verse 3, it says, Call to me, and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Okay. So those two scriptures reveal the mind of God when it comes to understanding that God, something God has already, already created. Yeah. Just like Jeremiah, God has already ordained that when you're going to be a man of God, a woman of God, a apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, or something, before he even called you. Before you even knew, before you even born, God had already made up his mind what you were going to do. Right. Now, it's important to realize that God did not figure it out after you were born. <laughs> uh, he didn't say, well, I like that boy over there. And, uh, you know, he kind of looked like a prophet and got a preacher's head. Right. So I guess I'm going to make him a prophet. Right. No, God already knew what you were going to do and who you were going to be before you were even born. So what you must do is go to the originator. Go to the one that formed it, the one that created, the one that designed the whole thing. He put you here. He brought you here. He put you around those messed up people. He put now. you in those adverse situations. He put you in all that controversy and brought you out because he knew exactly who you're supposed to be. So Come what on. you got to do, you got to go back to God. Somebody say go back to God. Go back to God. Amen. We got to go back to God. We have to go back to God, brother. The originator. Amen. The originator. Come on now. The, the blueprint holder. Come on now. The one that knows the end from the beginning. Come on now. Amen. The one. Amen. We have to go back to God. Amen. Because if you go any other way, you're gonna go astray. Mm, mm, mm. Praise God. And with that being said, I want to just elaborate back. Uh, uh, Jesus said, "Men ought to always pray." Look here. I hear God saying this strongly. Pick back up your prayer life. Pick back up your prayer life. Amen. Pick back up your prayer life. Let me tell you something. There's a window. There's a time. There, God is waking some of you up at, in the hour of between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. every night. You think that you're getting up to use the restroom, but really God is when he is waking you up at these particular hours saying it's time to pray. It's time to pray during the fourth watch of the hour. Amen. When uh, I think that was Peter on the boat. When Jesus came to him on the water, when Jesus, that, day that, that night Peter walked on the water, Jesus came during the fourth watch of the day. Amen. Fourth watch is not nighttime. It's not morning time. It's in between. Amen. And that's when the demons are the weakest between 3 and 6 a.m. Pick back up your prayer life, amen? If you need to seek God, you need to pray to God. Not only pray to God, you need to listen. You need to pray, stop, and then listen, amen? Because prayer is communication with God, amen? I heard, I heard, a, God told me one time I was seeking, I was seeking, uh, you know, uh, approval from man. God had gave me something, and I'm, you know, God will give you some time, and sometimes you be trying to tell everybody and bounce off everybody, and then God said, look, why are you asking them? They don't have their fruit in, in, in they don't have your fruit in their hand. I made you. Only I know the way that you should go. Amen. So look, 
pick back up your prayer life. Amen. All right. So about these, about the, the pastors, come on. Uh, uh, Prophet Richard, give me some clarification. There's someone that's a pastor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And because denomination has took certain offices of the fivefold ministry. What I mean is there are some denominations that feel strongly about apostles and prophets, but then there are some denominations that don't even, they don't even have no, no, they think the apostles and prophets is part of another denomination outside of them. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you got a man that's sitting here that every now and then he may get a word, but not really recognize it as a word. He'll say something told me instead of knowing that that's the Holy Ghost. Amen. So elaborate a little bit on the fivefold ministry, and there's a man that's a pastor, but he may he may have the office, he may think he got the calling or the anointing of an apostle. Connect the two, walk him up from pastorship up to apostleship. Amen. Well, the first thing we have to realize about when you when you're in any de a denominational setting, all denominations have their own culture right. that frames the identity of what a pastor is supposed to be. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of it is tradition is not biblical. Come on now. So what happens is a lot of pastors, they become a part of uh, denominations, organizations for the support systems, uh, for a sense of accountability or belonging, whether it's uh, imaginary or it really does exist. Right. Amen. So what happens is uh, God is not limited to our traditions, nor is he. Uh, he, he doesn't worry about, you know, the tradition of your denominations. Right. So what happens is when he wants to release instructions to you, he does it in the manner that he is specified. Right. And what he does, he speaks to your call. And see, that's very important for somebody to know. Because, see, somebody is frustrated right now because, see, they know they there's some things they're supposed to be doing. Right. They know God told them they were going to have a great church and a great ministry and they were going to be traveling and people going to get saved. They're going to get delivered and set free, but they're stuck somewhere. Amen. And some hole in the wall church way back on the Come backside on of some ghetto. Come on now. Amen. And they're doing everything they know how to do and it still ain't working. Still ain't working. Amen. And, and the thing is, because many times we miss God. Mm. Amen. We, we miss God. Yeah. Amen. So what we have to do is we have to, we have to clarify. Come on now. The call of God that we have been given and understand that many times pastorship as we know it is just an assignment. It's just an assignment. Temporary. Amen. Let, let me clarify what I mean. In other words, God can call you. Your life call could be that of a prophet. Right. But in order to mature you, in order to use you, in order to, amen, to cause you to be more effective, God will give you the assignment of a pastoral office. In other words, he'll give you a local church so you can learn how to, amen, so you can learn how to endure with the saints. Right. You can learn how to, amen, to discipleship people. You can learn, amen, how to do all the things, amen, that pastoral office brings into the life of a leader. Right. But at the same time, God says, amen, my main call upon your life is now. that of a prophet. Come on now. Amen. Come so on. when you when you get moved from tradition mm. to the prophetic, what you have to do is, number one, you're going to have to pray, number one. Number one. And you're going to have to surround yourself mm. with a prophetic people. Come on now. Many, many preachers miss it because they try to get prophetic, but they try to stay around the same people. My God, my God. The Bible even say iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. So what happens is when you find out, just like the birds of the same feather flock, flock together. together. Yeah. Amen. If I'm an eagle, I, brother, I don't want to hang out with chickens. Come on now. <laughs> you saying And what like I that. what I mean by chickens is I don't mean pastor being pastor is to be, to be a chicken, but what I mean is people who are not walking in the fullness of what God has called them to do. To That's do. what right, I mean. Right, right, right. Amen. Right. See, there are people out there, regardless of what God called you to do, they want you to stay where you are. Right. There are preachers right now, they are so afraid. You Listen, you're pastor in your first church, and it ain't working, and you're scared. You don't want to leave. You don't know what to do because you you told yourself you're going to pastor the same church all of your life. The devil is a liar. Come on now. That's a spirit of tradition. Amen. If you're going to truly be used by God, you got to be willing to move. You got to be willing to go. God might send you to the nations. You don't know where you're going. Right. So don't frame your the, your future, your family, and your life upon that little storefront right. or that little corner church right, way down right, right. on the backside yeah. of nowhere. Right, right. Amen. 
Because you'll never be fully effective. And you'll never be fulfilled. You'll never be satisfied until you walk in the fullness of what God put you on this earth to do. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I also want to, God, I want to, I want, I want to go to uh, James, the fifth chapter, the tenth verse. James 5 and 10. See, you need to understand this, that very few jump in this thing. You're going to have to go through something. Amen. Suffering is part of the, of the, of the process. Amen. Suffering is part of your preparation. Amen. In those moments, in those times of suffering, while you're yet in that, in that storefront with those seven people. Amen. That's a time to seek God's face for clarification. Amen. I want to read James 5 and 10. It says, because, you see, a lot of people... <laughs> A lot of people take this prophet title and office very lightly. You know, a lot of people say, I want to be an office. I want to be a prophet. You know what I'm saying? You need to know. It's a lot come with this thing. Amen. James 5 and 10 says, take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. See, so God's saying that the prophets are an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. In other words, in most cases, most prophets probably ain't even always delivered yet because God is still bringing them through, right? God has people. There's a certain people that's watching the prophets, amen? Uh, uh, the life of a prophet is a life of hardship, amen? Now, yeah, we see the good prophets. You know, we got the master prophets and all that, but I guarantee you it didn't happen overnight. Nothing's going to happen overnight, amen? Last night I was talking about your input is your output, amen? You're going to have to study to show yourself approved, amen? And so See, you might have been, uh, before I got where I am now, I used to be walking in the office of a prophet and never even knew no other prophets, amen? So I'm just like you. I'm a prophet, but I'm hanging out with some folk that don't, don't even understand the prophetic, amen? You are going to have to go that extra mile, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to seek God's face. You're going to have to read you some books, amen? And you're going to have to really reach out there and be amen. hungry, amen? Amen. Hungry for the prophetic. The Bible says, he that thirst and hunger after mm -hmm. righteousness shall be filled. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be filled, if you're going to be thirsty and hungry, you're going to have to seek God's Amen. face. Amen. Amen. Dealing listen, with this prophetic. Listen, one, one of the best examples of, of prophetic sharpening that I've seen in the Bible uh -huh. is, the, is what we see Samuel created at his house in Ramah. Okay. In, in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. The Bible says that, amen, the anointing there was so strong that when Saul sent messengers to take mm -hmm. David, he sent them three times. And what happens, they got consumed with the anointing to the point that they start, They went back to Saul prophesying. My God. And after the third time, he said, okay, well, y'all ain't going to kill David. I'm killing myself. My God. So when he came to kill David and when he saw the prophets prophesying, My God. amen, which was basic. See, what happened, they had an altar. They were right. calling on the name of the Lord. Right. They were speaking the word of God. Right. They had a heat altar going. My God. Amen. Amen. Like a prayer. They had a prayer service going. Right. They were calling on the name of the Lord, amen, with each other. And they were sharpening that prophetic gift right. under the direction of Samuel. Right. So what happened was that anointing was so strong that it even overpowered Saul oh. and stirred up the prophetic oh, in him. Yeah. Show see, you. see, the anointing can, is so strong, it can it can make a killer prophesy. My God. <laughs> <laughs> it sure said it listen, the they look, the messengers went to take David three times. Uh -huh. All listen, all three sets. It right. said messengers, so it had to be at least two. Right. So when they came back, they came back <laughs> what what we with the equivalent today, speaking in tongues right. and interpreting. Right, right. With a gift stirred. Right. Because it says in the text, when Saul got among the prophets, he started prophesying. He started prophesying. My God. Amen. So if you're going to be sharpened, My God. if you're going to be used, you're going to have to find you an altar somewhere that's on fire. Amen. With a prophetic anointing. Amen. Amen. And what I mean by that, be careful. Don't get caught up seeking after men's persons. Because there are many out here, amen, who call themselves prophets who got a nice little ring going on around them. Come on now. Amen. They, they got, you know, they, they didn't learn how to use their little gift pretty good. And, right. you know, they got a nice little uh, a following or a congregation. And they over there prophesying and laying hands and getting paid. 
You know, people throwing money down at their feet, on, amen, and on, they bought a big Lincoln and a new Cadillac and got a nice big purple shirt with a white collar, Come on now. amen. But that don't mean that the same thing that's going on with them is going to start happening with you, Come on, now. amen. It's not a man you need, it's God you need, Right. amen. And sometimes it, it, it does, uh, 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 that anointing does come wrapped up in a surrendered vessel, a surrendered but it has to be a surrendered vessel. Right. It can't be any kind of vessel. It got to be a surrender vessel. Amen. It got to be a man that has chose to put his life and lay it down, amen, for the work that God has called him to be. Amen. That's the kind of person you need to get in contact with if you're going to go looking for somebody. Other than that, don't go looking for a man. Go looking for an altar. Oh my God. My God. Look, find you a place where the fire of God falls. Wow. Find you a place where you can lay on your face. Find you a place where the prophetic unction is going forth. And it's not about trying to lift up a man or a person. But it's about seeking and calling on the name of God. That's what you need in order to walk into the fullness of what God called you to do. Be no mistake about it. If you think that you're going to be the flare. And you're going to be the life. And you're going to be the glitz around a bunch of unanointed people. Let me tell you what's going to happen. They're going to suck the life out of you. They're going to suck the life out of you. And guess what? They're going to suck the life out of you. <laughs> you got to get around some people that got the same kind of spirit you got. Mm. Some folk to sharpen you. Amen. You need to get around some people who have already been where you're going. You need to be around some people that can see things about you you don't even know. You need to be around some people that can pull the best out of you. You need to be around some people that encourage you to use your gifting and that anointing that God has given you. Oh God. Amen. You can't stay around chickens and be an eagle. You're going to have to find you an eagle's nest. Oh Amen. And when you find it, make sure it's on fire. Amen. So look. All right. So there's someone. I want you to elaborate on this. There's someone. That's sitting in a church that's not aware of the fivefold ministry. Now they are gifted, uh, they're anointed, but they are not yet appointed. Amen. What would you, what kind of wisdom would you have for that person? Because see, I used to be that person. I think before the church that my wife and me and I, uh, me and my wife got our head right now. Before we got to that church, we went through five churches. Now, I, I didn't just become the prophet when I got where I was, where I'm at now. I was the prophet when I was at the first church. Amen. So I said uh, at, at that first church, and I was going to the school of prophets, uh, the school of the prophetic, and I was studying, studying the word of God, and I was seeking God's face, and I was stepping out on faith, allowing God to use me. But when I got back to the church on Sunday, and that prophetic word would rise up in my spirit, and I had a pastor that there was no room for it. It wasn't no room for it. Mm -hmm. So, so I basically went back home with the gifts, never unwrapped the gift. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Until finally, I almost got bitter because I didn't understand exactly what was going on. Because I'm like, I'm out here buying CDs and tapes from other men of God. I'm hearing the revelation. I'm getting the teaching, but it wasn't lining up with where I was at. Amen. So geographically, I was not in the right place mm. for my gift to flow, and the door wasn't open. So what would you have to say to that particular man or woman of God that's sitting on the gift right there, but they are aware of the gift, but they're bound by uh, my granddad is the cornerstone of this church? Well, brother, you, 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 you said a lot. <laughs> I got one key phrase for you. Why sit we here My God. until we die? Mm, 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 mm. Why sit we here un mm -hmm. uh, until we die? Listen, if you don't step out, you will dry out. My God. Say that again. If you don't step out, mm -hmm. <laughs> you will dry out. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and what people have to realize, I've seen people who have literally spent a lifetime and set on the gift of God. My to the point that it dried up and became nothing. nothing. They missed their season of service. Mm. And all, see, people don't understand. Let me tell you something. See, a be believers quickly embrace the promises of God. But you got to understand, there's not one promise that God has given you that is not connected to the call of God on your life. That's good. That's good. I like that. Uh, let, let me tell you this. See, even if you're not called to be a call to fivefold ministry, if you do have a call to a particular area of service, everything God promised you he was going to do is connected to that. Right. 
So what happens is you have people who sit down on the gift of God and they sit down on the call of God. And what happens is they, they constantly run to God and they complain about not yet inheriting the promises of the Lord. Mm. They, they say, God, where's my inheritance? You know what I'm saying? And then what God turned around and said, where's my service? Where is, where is, amen, the ministry that I told you, I told you you were going to walk in it, but when opportunity came, you did not move. Mm. You want to sit in grandma's church and granddaddy's church and you want to hum Dr. Watts and you want to do all these things. But the fact of the matter, you already know in your spirit that you're not going to be able to flow fully and freely where you are. Right. So you're going to have to move. Amen. The question to. is, what are your loyalties? Are your loyalties with this brick and this mortar? On, or your loyalties with God. Mm. Are, lo are your loyalties, you want to stay at this church because these p dead, dried up folk around here got the same last name you got. Come on now. So you can control the church and stay over to Sunday school. And amen, ain't nobody getting saved. Ain't nobody getting set right, free. Right, ain't nobody right. getting delivered. Right, right, amen. And right. then every once in a while, here you go telling somebody on the gossip line what you saw the Lord said on, and all that stuff. And then when it become confirmed, you pat yourself on the back. And they say, ooh, you show is anointed. Amen. What's the use of being anointed around a bunch of folk when it ain't going nowhere? Right, right. It ain't right, going right. nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Now, the ministry ain't going nowhere. Come no signs. No water. Wonders, no revelation, come no on. deliverance, no come breakthroughs, come nothing. On. Come on now. Come on now. Amen. When people do that, amen, it's because you don't have a heart for God. Mm. The love of God is not in you. Mm. Because if you could, if you can sit on that gift, which is designed, amen, to be a blessing mm. and to be a help to others. Mm. To my, amen, designed to give light to those that cannot see. Mm. Amen. To give ear, hearing to those that cannot hear. Amen. To understanding for those who can't under understand. Come Amen. On. You're going to take that gift and sit on it. Amen. And be selfish. Yeah. And be like the servant that had one talent. Mm -hmm. You're going to take it and bury it in the ground and no one's going to get another. You are selfish. And why should you, why should God bless you? Why should he bless you with a house? Why should he bless? Why, why you expect him to bless your children for you? No, he'll do it for them, but he will not do it for you. Mm. Because you have taken the gift of God. Amen. And you have made the word of God of none effect Come by on sitting on the gift of God. My God, my Lord, bless me. Yeah. Lord, bless me. I can't pay this bill. I can't that bill. I can't pay the bill. Get off your tail. Mm -hmm. Amen. And do what God has called you to do. My God, let me tell you something. Do you know you giving one person one prophetic word could change your life? Mm -hmm. You know, I met some, some prophets. And, 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 you know, my thing, I do a little thing. I kind of, I kind of. I kind of test folk to see where they really at, you know, because there's so many prophets out here. And so, you know, you, you ask a prophet, you know, so what is the Lord saying? And so they got this new thing where they say, well, I don't speak if the Lord doesn't give me nothing. Uh, so what you're saying is that you don't brother, have a word. They don't, you know why they, they, don't, <laughs> they don't have a word? Because this is the thing. See, with no altar means no open heaven. My God. My God, my God. Amen. My God. See, the, in place in the Bible, the scriptures talk about having an open heaven. See, if you really, if you're anointed of God and you're operating in your flow yeah. and you in your land. See, what, what happens is when you give over to the prophetic anointing, what happens is, amen, you get a continual open heaven and then you always have access. Right, right. See, I'm going to tell you something. Right. See, prophets operate in the gift of, uh, uh, of word of knowledge a word of wisdom and right. prophecy. Right. And of course, there's always, if you're a sharp believer, there's always, baby, tongues and interpretation. Come on now. Come on now. Come on so now. I don't have to go inquire a lot of people say, go on, I need, I need a word. I see the word of the Lord is already in my loins. Come on now. Come on now. And because the word of the Lord is in my loins, I already have advanced knowledge right. of what time it is. Come on now. Come on now. You understand what I'm saying? Right, I'm See, when I go pray to God, I don't go pray about folks' situations. Right. When I go pray to God, I don't pray about circumstances. Right. When I go pray to God, I lay down before him and I commune and I fellowship with him. My God. In his prayer. That, yeah, because I ain't got time to be asking for this and asking for that yeah. and inquiring about yeah. so. Look, hey, God, that's not the, that I don't have that spirit. Right. You know, right. some people are called to intercession. Right. Amen. Right. But as a prophet, I'm not called to intercession in intercession, I'm called to intercept. Come on now. <laughs> ah, my God. 
Do you I understand got, what I'm saying? You, yeah. So I'm not called to intercession. I'm called to intercept. Yeah, yeah. God has given me the authority to catch something flying through the air that the Come devil on. has sent and pull it down. Catch it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got you. I got amen. You. And I amen. You. Prophets have advanced knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, prophetic insight is the word, amen, right, we can right, use. Right. right exactly. And if you're op operating in an apostolic, you can always have apostolic revelation. Right. God will right. give you a revelation when other people are asleep. Right, right, right. Amen. So I don't need to go get a word. I got the word is already in my loins it's because I'm a prophet. I have cultivated, this is the key, I have cultivated an open heaven. And see, I'm going to tell you something. There's no lack of supply. There's only a lack of demand, brother. Come on now. Come on now. The only reason I'm not prophesying 24 hours a day is because ain't nobody asking me questions. <laughs> you see it, son. Come on now. You understand know what I'm saying? Because gotcha. there's no lack of answers. There's only right. a lack of questions. Right, right, right. You ask the right questions, you get the right exactly. answers. Amen. amen. All right. Amen. Glory to God. And you know another thing, brother? Mm -hmm. Even when you ask, amen, you have to ask in the right spirit, right. humbly, amen, seeking, amen, and not ask a miss. Because some folks right. ask and they ask, you know, they, Man, I guess I'm going to try him. You know, they want to play. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Don't Listen, you got a prophet of God that's a real man of God. I don't, listen, even, don't come playing. Right. Amen? Right. Don't come playing. Right. Because, see, you, you ask, you might just get your answer. Right. You want to ask why you got a divorce, you might get the real answer. Right. And if you ask in the wrong spirit, everybody else might get to hear it too. Come on now. <laughs> you want to ask why God ain't blessed you with this and that yet. Yeah. Amen. You might get confronted about your disobedience. Come on now. Hey, you want to ask why God ain't, you want to blame it on God, you might get, amen, get a sharp rebuke. Amen. So when you come to the man of God, and he, and he is the man of God, ask in the right spirit. I'm going to tell you something. If your prophet can't give you an answer on demand, mm. I doubt his credentials. My God. Hallelujah. That's not the spirit of divination. Amen. That's a, that's a surrender vessel that is doing what he called to do. Let me tell you something. If the psychics in the world know more than the men and women of God, we are lost. My God. My God. If the psychics and the divinators, amen, can come and look in the spirit, go in the spirit and get answers and the prophet came, what, what, where are we? Something ain't right. Something ain't right about that. Under the book of si. Mm. Amen. So if you call yourself a prophet, mm. amen, you call yourself got a spiritual gift, you call yourself anointed, amen, if your stuff ain't on demand, amen, it is not ready. You need to go back in the oven. My God, my God. And, 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 and we wanna, I want to go back to, 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 to prayer. Mm -hmm. See, you can be an intercessor and not be a prophet, but you can't be a prophet and not be an intercessor. Mm -hmm. See, when God drops people and, and particular people in your mind, it's because he trusts you to start praying right then. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you might It might be somebody you ain't saw. I'm thinking about old uh, brother went to school with me, Tony Smith or something, and, and, and I ain't seen Tony Smith in 10 years, but the fact that he dropped in my spirit and the fact that I'm a prophet, the fact that I know who I am, God is saying pray for Tony Smith, amen? So stop overlooking these, these, the, quit talking about something told me or something said. Know that amen. it's the Holy Ghost that dwells on the inside of you, amen? And, and that he's working with you, amen? And he's trusting you to pass this assignment, to handle this assignment. Amen, brother. When you have been anointed by God or given a, a spiritual, you've been given a, a prophetic gift, mm -hmm. and when you, and you start constantly, when you're constantly speaking out of your mouth, Something said to me, or I heard something. You are literally grieving the Holy Spirit. Right. What you are basically doing, you are denying the word of God and making it of none effect. None effect. When God has securely spoken to you in, in, the, in, in, listen, in proven channels and let you know that he has called you and you are still bumbling around in unbelief. Amen. You do no honor to God and you do no honor to yourself. And I'm going to tell you something. What I found out is this, too. Amen. When you do that, see, God has, see, the Lord knows what you do not know. And he knows that in your future, there are things that the enemy going to send to you that your prophetic gift is supposed to shut down before it even gets started. My God. So what happens is that when you are in denial about your gift, and you're in denial uh, of the ministry that God has given you, and you're not walking any fully, what happens is the enemy Ask God to send you. He said, okay, let me send this to so-and-so. Right. And if they are who they're supposed to be, that gifting of theirs will see it before it even gets started. Oh 
So what happens when you in denial, you end up in trouble and going through things you were never supposed to go through. Right, right, right. I'm with you. Because you over here talking about, well, else? I had something and I had something showed me something. I guess I didn't know what it was. I right. thought, you know, I thought it. it listen, the devil is a liar. Mm -mm. Listen, faith speaks what it believes. And when you operate in a gift of faith, there is no I thought might is this what it is. Right, right. This is what it is. Right. Hey, somebody need to say somebody, hey amen, who's been feeling weak about their gift need to say that out of their mouth in faith right now. This is what it is. My God. Amen. This is what it is. So you got to get accustomed to speaking it in faith. You say, well, what if that's not it? Amen. Speak it to yourself, then let God confirm it. Amen. To build your faith. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But build your faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. You say, what if I make a mistake? Well, if you make a mistake, you'll learn to clarify, amen, better as you go down the road. Right. But it's better to make a mistake and learn than to do nothing. Come on now. Amen. Your mistakes are really your wisdom. Amen. Why? Because once right. you keep going the wrong way, once you know, if I know that I'm going the wrong way, then guess what? It turned to wisdom because I know that ain't the way to go because that was the wrong way last time. Mm -hmm. It's the wrong way this time. Amen. Amen. So we're dealing with this prophetic. I want you to understand one thing. God trusts his prophets. Amen. Mm -hmm. He trusts his prophets. Uh, Second Chronicles 2 and 2. See, understand this. God doesn't have to always be and say something because a prophet speak it. He, he, God will back up the authority of the office of a true prophet. Yes, Amen. Uh, uh, right. uh, who's the Elijah commanded it not to rain, mm -hmm. stop right. the rain for three years. Mm -hmm. God didn't send the word for the rain to stop the prophet. That was something that the prophet spoke and commanded. Amen. Let's look over in 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. Amen. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20, the B portion of that uh, specific scripture, it says, Believe in the Lord your God. Amen. So shall you be established. Amen. Number one, you must believe in God and you will be established. Amen. But the B part of this says, Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Mm -hmm. So first believe in God and I'm going to be established, but then believe the word of the prophet and I will prosper. Well, th that's, that's not saying that, that God said everything that the prophet said. Amen. Mm -hmm. God said, believe in the prophet. God said, believe in me. Mm -hmm. Then believe in the one that I've sent. Mm -hmm. And you'll prosper. Amen. Elaborate. Well, well, brother, I want to say this. And, and one thing that people of God have to know is that all everybody that's claiming to be a prophet is not a prophet. Come on now. You got, you have a, we, we, we do a thing nowadays where we, we take any vessel that's speaking and we call it the prophet. Right. In other words, if the evangelist is up and he's speaking, and then he starts prophesying, over there the prophet said. Right. Or even the pastor, right. the prophet said. Right. Amen. Right. Well, quite frankly, amen, a lot of our pastors are not prophets right. at all. Right. And a lot, see, but listen, if they're operating and flowing in the prophetic, Amen. I'm talking about genuine prophetic. Right. Amen. Then God will honor that. Amen. Right, right. But a lot of these, a lot of these evangelists, right, and, right, right. You know, right, these right. folk are preaching. Listen, let me let me give you the worst, most prostituted word that I see right now when I see preachers preaching. It's the word now. Mm. Oh God. See, my Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what happens is, where the true prophet says now. What he's saying there, there is a rhema on this word, and God has has declared that he's a he's moving, amen, at this very moment to establish uh, what he says he's he's doing. Right. So with, with a true prophetic anointing that's given from heaven, there's a legitimacy on the now. Right. But what in how the true the key was the true prophetic. Yes. Which is yes. Not these folks that's running around. See? But now. It's become the new hottest thing right, to right. say now right. and just hope God going to do something. Right, right. God's going to do it. Right. <laughs> you know, right. yeah, I'm going to tell right. you something. Yeah.